We can see it. Oh, get him. Oh, no, I didn't make start again. Okay, here we go. I'd like to just begin by telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, I live in Florida, and I think you can see my pointer here. I live in Venice, way down here, pretty far south in Florida. And as I said earlier, it's 31 degrees here right now. We don't really have cold weather at all, and we never have any freezing things. It rains here this time of year almost every day. So it's green and beautiful, lots of pretty flowers. These are some scenes from the little town I live in. Uh, it's only 14,000 people, but we have a lot of stamp collectors here. We have a stamp club that has over 100 members. So we're very fortunate to have uh, this beautiful place to live in and wonderful weather and lots of stamp collecting friends. This is not, not surprisingly, was my very first topic that I started collecting. I care very much about the Florida manatee, which is an endangered species. Um, I don't know, I hope some of you have actually seen a manatee. They're amazing, fascinating animals. They can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. They are vegetarian. They uh, do not kill anything. They have no natural predators, but they are being systematically wiped out in the United States. Propellers and pollution causing uh, their loss of habitat. They eat um, seagrass and the seagrass is being killed by pollutants and they're starving. So this is a dire situation. This was my very first uh, exhibit it's not a very good exhibit. We all have to start somewhere, right? And uh, most of the stamps are contemporary because of course we didn't have underwater photography until fairly recent years. This is my British connection. I have a very close British connection. These are my grandchildren, Claudia and Dominic. They're proper British school children. They have lovely British accents and um, I don't get to see them near often enough that you can imagine. This is my son Robin. He moved to England to go to graduate school and he never came back. Um, he is an avid gardener. He, they have a community garden and he has two allotments, great big garden and grows everything. Uh, his uh, community garden was invited to have a display at the Hampton Court Palace Botanical Show. And here he is at the display and his shirt has vegetables on it. The other photo shows my son the day he went to number 10 Downing Street uh, on business and it was great fun. He enjoyed every minute of it. They live in St. Albans. Have any of you been to St. Albans? I think you probably have. It's the, this, is, this is the cathedral in St. Albans. It's the oldest cathedral in England. It's a beautiful, beautiful little Victorian city with brick streets. Well, as I said before, I know many of you and have enjoyed collegial uh, friendships with many, many of uh, thematic collectors from the UK. I'm sure you all recognize Leslie Marley up there in the left. I had the pleasure to interview her about her wonderful exhibit, uh, A Whale Scale, for our book, which I'm going to show you a little later. Uh, as Gary said, he made it over to the US to our show a number of years ago. And I hope that all of you will be able to come to one of our shows at some time. And there's, of course, Wendy's wonderful exhibit on paper, which I use a, a, a view of that in the talks that I give about thematic exhibiting because her plan is dynamite, wonderful plan, logical, beautiful, everything that we want in a thematic plan. So Barry posed an interesting um, topic to me. Uh, he 
said that there's some confusion between the US and the UK about what does topical mean, what does thematic mean. Uh, and I would say that that confusion is not just between the United States and the UK. Every talk that I give, people ask the question, is it topical, is it thematic? So I thought we could maybe discuss that a bit. Well, I think part of it goes to the difference between uh, British English and American English. I call these cookies. I think you call them biscuits, right? I call uh, that a sweater. And I think you call that a jumper. And then I call those candy, and maybe you sometimes do too, but my grandchildren call them sweets. Ah, here's one. I call these French fries, and uh, you call them chips, right? Am I right? Somebody correct yes. me if I... <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, here's two, two of my favorites. I think that aubergine is a much nicer word for this vegetable than eggplant. And for a long time, my, da my uh, daughter-in-law would tell me that she was going to have her fringe trimmed. And it was a long time before I realized that she was talking about what we call bangs. I think the British have a nicer word. Uh, but here's one that I'm going to say, you got the word right. We call this a pacifier. And what do you call this? Dummy. A dummy, right. <laughs> so we have subtle differences in words we use, and I think that's kind of what this comes down to. Here are two thematic exhibits, Larry Davidson from Canada, a wonderful exhibit on beavers, and Greg Belagian's wonderful exhibit on the lion. And I, I'm gonna tell you in the United States how we differentiate topical and thematic. And then I'd love to know if what I'm telling you is the same in, in the UK. Larry undoubtedly started collecting uh, beavers on stamps, stamps that showed the beaver, as well as probably other philatelic items that picture a beaver. And we would call that a topical collection. But then he progressed and he expanded his collection to become thematic. He included a lot of other things about the beaver, its evolution, where it lives, uh, its anatomy and physiology, what it eats, its mating and reproduction, um, the predators, and almost always there are connections to art, music, literature, customs, culture, etc. And so at that point, we would say that Larry's collection and subsequently Larry's exhibit was thematic. Would, would someone volunteer and tell me if that's basically how, how you would look at that in the UK? Yeah, I think that's how we would look at it. But, but you don't use the word topical, is that correct? Yes, I, I think the concept is just not known. It's um, uh, not so much that there's a disagreement, uh, that we just don't use it. A lot of the BTA members do collect topically. I, um, and we'll see some of those at Stampex. So there's, uh, there's a number, in fact, which have um, um, just images of parrots, for instance. Um, and we know one collector who has nothing but birds, hundreds if not thousands of philatelic items showing birds, uh, which I would call topical, because he doesn't do anything like the origin or the food or anything else. It was just images of the subject and nothing else. So I, I think we, we strongly agree with you with that, yes. But that's All just right. my view, others may disagree with me. Yes, I have seen Michael Blackman's wonderful collection of umbrellas, and he is gonna share that with uh, ATA this coming winter, and we're really looking forward to that. So now I'd like to just bring you up to date on a few things 
going on with, with ATA, we have a lot of services that are available to you, uh, even if you are not an ATA member, although if you're not, we would love to have you, of course. This is our booth at our recent show in Chicago. As some of you might know, uh, a few years ago, we joined with the American Philatelic Society to do a joint show. There were a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the cost of venues in the United States, and I'm sure everywhere, was going up, up, up. It became very difficult for ATA, which moved around with our show to different locations every year, to mount a show. It mounted to starting over every year with a new venue, new dealers, etc. So that was it was very advantageous to uh, create that joint show. And the good result of that is we have more exhibits, more dealers, more programs, more seminars, uh, more social events, just more of everything. And this has evolved into a huge show. And this past year, we also invited to join us the American First Day Cover Society. And uh, it, that was a wonderful addition to our event. Despite COVID, we had uh, almost as many people as have come to previous shows. Uh, next year, we'll be in Sacramento. That's an awful long way for you to come. But the following year, we'll be in Columbus, Ohio, which is not too bad. And the year after that, we'll be in Hartford, Connecticut, a beautiful place and lots of tourism around there. So that might be a nice one to plan on. And we would love to have you come over and join us for this show. Uh, this is the ATA booth, a photo that I took early in the morning before the show opened. And believe me, it didn't look like this during the show. It was crowded every minute. We were very fortunate to recruit 50 new ATA members during this uh, event. We had four keynote speakers. All our ATA affiliated study units had a lot of meetings and programs. It was just busy and exhausting. We had a donor who very generously uh, gave us the money to have these boxes made. And they have a little carrying handle. We gave them to ATA members and it was really fun at the show to see these boxes all around the show and people could make their purchases and put them in their box. Uh, these are the stamps uh, that the United States Postal Service issued during the show. They're called Backyard Games. They're not my favorite postage stamps, but as you can see, ATA had fun because there, there was a topical sheet and we had come and play with ATA on lots of different things. I hope that you've had a chance to be exposed to ATA checklists. Um, ATA has a database of three quarters of a million topical stamps and we are able to uh, search that database and produce checklists for topical collectors to use uh, in their collecting and in their shopping. Uh, as the years have gone by, we have two people that work every day adding new issues to our uh, database. And they also create more uh, lists of specific topics. So as of today, we have 1,530 different topical checklists available to our members. We've been able to separate out big topics like birds, um, dogs, cats, space, aviation, a lot of different big, huge topics. We've been able to separate them out into many smaller topics. So you can now get birds by species, uh, cats by breeds, etc. cetera. Um, what these checklists look like, these checklists are available uh, as an Excel spreadsheet. So you can manipulate them on your computer if you wish. 
You can get them as a PDF or you can get them printed. I like to print mine and take it to the show and use it as my shopping list. And I hope you can see this well enough, but basically reading from left to right, it lists the type of item, a stamp, a souvenir sheet, and so forth. It lists the country of issue, the date of issue, the denomination on the stamp, and the Scott catalog number. Now that might not be as useful to people in the UK as it is to Americans, because I know that you don't use the Scott catalog as extensively as, as we do. And then it has a description of what's on the stamp. So this is, this is one of the major re reasons that people join ATA because uh, without this list, you're kind of on your own in terms of collecting a topic. So uh, this has been a great addition to our services and one that we are constantly expanding and improving. <laughs> this is our new website. I've been on online for about a year now, and it is easy to navigate. It has lots of things uh, that you can use as a collector, and they're available to everyone, and I will show you a couple of them. Uh, as I said before, over this past winter, we gave 47 different programs on myriad subjects and many of those are available on our website. You just click on and watch the program. I'll just read you just a short list. There are many more than this, but these are some that might interest you. Differentiating between errors, freaks, and oddities. If you have trouble with that like I do, you'll enjoy the presentation we have. There's a presentation on maps on stamps, the most beautiful bridge in Paris, indigenous peoples, innovation, evolution. You'll have to watch that one to find out what that one's about. COVID and philately. You would be amazed at the stamps that have been issued related to COVID. Jean Wang, a Canadian ATA member, has, has a wonderful program about that. We have programs on Navigating eBay and Del Comp. And there's one really intriguing program that is People and Events of Eastern Europe through Topical Philately. Uh, take a look when you have a few minutes and I hope you'll watch some of these. They're, they're really good. We've been very fortunate. We are already getting uh, volunteers of people with amazing topics to share with us this next winter, and we'll be offering a series of programs beginning in January. Our website also has a section on exhibiting. Uh, many of you are already ATA members, so you have read the, the, the articles that Rob Hennick submits for our journal Topical Time. But many of those, as well as some other resources, are in the thematic exhibiting section on our website. And I would encourage you to check that out. This you might not, um, unless you stumble on it on our website, you might not have seen these. Uh, we have a couple of very talented, creative people that create pages that are in our youth section, but I would say they're most definitely not just for young people. They are fun, there are acti activities to do and really interesting articles about all kinds of topics. We now have over 600 pages of content. There, these can all be downloaded and printed if you would like to share them with a young person. We also have over 500 topical album pages that can be printed. That's a great way to get people started in collecting is to give them some stamps and some album pages. This is a book that we published a couple of years ago. There's an interesting story to this book. Um, Jack Gray, a longtime 
Canadian ATA member, spent over 30 years compiling this book. He selected over 800 different topics and did the research to find the very first postage stamp that was issued for that topic. You will enjoy this book, especially I think, because it begins with uh, the Penny Black and there's a long section about all the topics that are covered uh, on the Penny Black, including Queen Victoria's pearls and so forth. It goes into really fascinating detail about that stamp. Um, interestingly, since this book has come out, some of our study units on different topics such as maps who had been telling people for years that a certain stamp was the first stamp issued, uh, subsequently found out when they read what's first that they had been wrong and they've made some changes. We've also found a few mistakes in what's first and that's understandable. And uh, so we encourage people to let us know so that we can um, correct the record as to what the very first stamp is. This book is really helpful if you're an exhibitor because if you uh, have a theme that you're doing for your exhibit, you can show philatelic knowledge, you can show rarity by showing older material and the first stamp for your topic or whatever it is you're discussing can be very helpful. <laughs> this is our newest book, Topical Adventures, which came out uh, about a year ago in the middle of the pandemic. And there's a fascinating story to this book also. This book is written by more than 50 ATA members who contributed their expertise in many different areas. It's also lavishly illustrated with stamp images and exhibit pages and much more. It begins with how do I select a topic or a theme? to collect, goes through all the things to consider. And then it tells about the full range of philatelic items that you can collect. And then it goes into how to go about shopping and acquiring your material, how to display it, how to store it and so forth. The full spectrum of topical thematic collecting. There then is a large section on exhibiting and it goes into a step-by-step -step detail as to how to begin to put together an exhibit and gives many, many examples and images of high award-winning exhibits. And you will recognize many of the people's exhibits that are in this book because they are BTA members. We, it was a wonderful collaboration and people were very generous in sharing their wonderful exhibits. There's an interview with Leslie Marley about how she got started and, and what some of her goals in exhibiting are. It's fascinating. I would definitely recommend that. In addition to the um, main, those main sections, we have some other things. We have a um, detailed list of foreign thematic outside of the US, by, I mean by foreign um, thematic organizations, a lot of resources, a bibliography. And throughout the book, there are what we call vignettes, which are short articles. Sometimes they're personal uh, articles by members who tell why they are enjoying thematic collecting, or other aspects of what they're doing. Uh, some of them are, are brief articles on topics that are inter of interest to many collectors, such as how to, to select paper for your album pages or your exhibits. Uh, lots of different uh, quick reading. We wanted to make this a comprehensive guide to this subject, but we also wanted it to be something that you could pick up and read for 15 minutes one day if you just wanted to have an enjoyable time. And here's our favorite page in that book, which is 
the article about the British Thematic Association uh, written by the one and only Barry Stagg. So you definitely would like to see our book for, for this. Unfortunately, to ship this book to the UK, this is an expensive purchase. But I would suggest to you that uh, Christmas is coming and Santa might be willing to get this for you for, for a gift for Christmas. So that's a, a, just a quick look at some of the things that we've got going on at ATA and I would be glad to open it up here now to discussion, questions, uh, anything at all. Thank you for that, Dawn. Okay, are there any, um, any questions for Dawn? Well, while I think of the questions, could I ask one? Um, uh, at your shows, what sort of numbers do you get at your shows, the joint shows? Uh, 3,000 people uh, this year, normally 3,500, 4,000. Gosh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and do they come in for nothing or do you make them pay a small fee? Uh, no, it's free. It's free, is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think I read somewhere you're moving to some online competitions. Is that just a temporary thing or are you going to keep that going? Well, that's a really good question. Um, during the pandemic, we did have a few shows that went virtual. Some of them were uh, exhibition only, no judging. But then as time went by and we got more into it, several organizations did actually have judged exhibits, um, both exhibits and literature exhibits. Um, one show that I can think of, CPEX in Seattle, had their live show a couple of weeks ago and, and I was there. And now I think maybe this weekend, I, Michelle, I may, do you know, is there, a, they have a virtual show and I can't remember if it's this weekend, maybe next weekend. And that actually will be also be judged. So they took on the big job of having an, a physical show as well as a virtual show. But my feeling is that that will not be the usual because this, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, but I I think if if you if since we've got a minute, if Michelle would tell you just briefly a little bit about ATA's one page exhibit and I know that BTA also has done a one page yes. uh, exhibit um, but we have one going on right now. Michelle just tell us a little bit about that. I am happy to do that uh, and some of you have heard from me in the past about ATA's my one page exhibit. Of course um, the BTA has a, a wonderful history of doing this uh, type of event, creating a single page, a uh, thematic or topical page that allows you to share stamps and tell a story. And so uh, taking a, a, a tip from you and others who have tried this uh, kind of event, we did the same. Um, and I can share in a chat just now, the, uh, here is the link uh, to those exhibits on the ATA website. We collected uh, uh, hundreds of exhibits from many, many different exhibitors uh, from around the world, uh, of course, across the US and uh, several other countries. And we were excited about that. Uh, this was our first ever, but it will not be our last. We found that we got great feedback it was lots of fun, and that link takes you to exhibits in um, about a dozen different categories where you can see uh, topical uh, collections in, uh, related to culture, post uh, postal history, um, animals, a variety of topics, and all of them uh, teach about something. I, I learn something new every time I look at one. And we had no, uh, there was no requirement to be a member to participate. Uh, and we 
had no fee. And the idea here was to encourage uh, all types of folks. We certainly had uh, BTA members who contributed uh, and as well as others, but we also had a, a great range from uh, really experienced exhibitors to clearly fledgling philatelists. So you're going to see some pretty raw uh, exhibits as some of these were students trying their hand. And, and we wanted to specifically encourage all to be able to be a part and try it out uh, without fear, uh, and truly just enjoy the stamps. So we will be doing this again uh, in the coming year. And I would love to see your names on many exhibits. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Somebody asked about what are study units. That's that's a great question. Um, ATA has about 50 topical study units. These are smaller groups of people who all collect one specific topic or a range of topics, such as space. Um, there, there are lots of different study units. The people share information. Most of them have uh, journals. Most of them have websites. You can go on the ATA website and click on study units and explore the full range of study units. I'm involved with the gastronomy uh, study unit, which is people that collect food on stamps. Uh, there's a, really a big selection and it's a great way to explore a topic in more depth with other people that also like that topic. Okay, thank you, Dawn. Uh, any more questions for Dawn? I'm just, um, while well, I'm perhaps thinking of one or two more for you, Dawn, um, is the, are you going to be present at the, is it 2015 at the, the Boston International? Are you going to have a presence there? Oh yes, I'm sure we will. Yeah, good. That'll be, that should be a fun, fun event. It seems hard to believe that we've gone yes. 10 yes. years and before another international show. Yes, it's a long time. <laughs> right, I, I'll just give them a few more seconds. Any other questions from anybody? And as, as um, I've been talking with people uh, all during the pandemic and we've had so many wonderful Zoom presentations, uh, we, there's certainly no lack of uh, activity in our hobby, is there? We're finding uh -huh. lots of ways to stay busy and try new things and get to know each other. It's just really as bad as the last couple of years have been. Uh, this has really been a, a fun experience to uh, get to know so many people around the world. ATA has people who get up in the middle of the night to come to our programs. Yes, yes, indeed. I must admit, uh, the BTA has seen members uh, for the first time uh, because they live so far away and uh, uh, don't have an opportunity to come to any of our meetings. So it's great to see the, all these people. And um, I'm sure Zoom is, or it's like, is going to be with us, uh, perhaps not quite with the same intensity, but nevertheless still there. Because we have people uh, in the best of times who cannot travel for all sorts of reasons. And here's an opportunity to, to keep them um, with us. Well, I don't think anything else, anybody else has popped in with a question. Uh, I don't have any more. So I think um, what I'd like to say is thank you very much, Dawn, for a, a lovely review of the uh, American stamp scene, if I may call it that, uh, and all the various and many activities of the ATA. Um, uh, I'm always very impressed with your membership oh, numbers. And I have to keep on telling myself that you have uh, a country whose population is far bigger than ours. So that's my excuse. We have members in 50 countries, <laughs> ATA members that come from 50 countries, despite our name having the word American in it. Yes. Uh, we're <laughs> truly an international group. Absolutely. Very, very happy about that. Uh, it's lovely to hear from you all. And thank you very much for getting up at this reasonably unearthly hour for some of you. Um, so could I ask uh, uh, everybody watching to show our appreciation in the usual manner? Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I love being here and I wish you all lots of happy collecting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.